the, the space today, the changes in the blockchain space and the body, the trap of uh, disillusionment. Um, some of my colleagues have already spoken about a few of the things that I will show here, but we'll try to attack it or to look at it from a different uh, angle. So a bit about myself. I am an entrepreneur from the financial uh, technology space, fintech, and of course blockchain. I'm a founder of Smartologic, IO, which is an integration and a project management company. We dealt with several uh, blockchain projects that we advise with it's a worm which is here, um, IronX in exchange or different other projects such as uh, stocks, buff and so on. And I'm also a founding partner of a decentralized fund called the True Global Venture, uh, which is investing in blockchain projects. So here we actually uh, try, I think everyone can, can uh, align with this picture and, and uh, we kind of feel the same today in the blockchain space where it's uh, really a stormy weather and we'll try to, to analyze a bit uh, why we see the changes and, and what we hope will happen. So a bit of a uh, background, uh, the once bullish ICO market has now matured and of course the wave of optimistic momentum is, is decreasing. Um, I think everyone is feeling that. Um, ICO funding has declined steadily. I have some experience with funding through fintech companies and, and other involvements, the uh, entrepreneurs uh, that uh, I had and been uh, escorting. And through 2018, of course, we see a huge or, or a dramatic decline in investment. And we'll discuss about it. Uh, why? What are the reasons for it? So there are several reasons and of course the values of crypto where people had more value of each Bitcoin or Ethereum, they felt richer, they invested, they, there was a much more hype. Uh, early stage projects where people, when people invested, they were expecting to see something happen but still it takes time. You cannot build a real company in one year or two years. So we will see those projects coming up but only later. And community involvement is a bit uh, decreasing also because of these uh, uh, reasons. And of course the regulation, which is uh, changing and not yet uh, stable for us. Um, still there is lack of uh, mass adoption, which every product and every company at the end need uh, users. And we'll talk about the cycle of technology, which actually leads us to this first uh, graph that we'll see. Um, does anyone know what is this uh, graph? Have you ever seen it before? Okay, cool. So Gartner, which is a research company, um, my name is Gartner, so it's not the same. It's not my graph, unfortunately. But um, this graph actually says that every technology, new technology, can be placed on this graph when one of the vertical is the expectation uh, from the technology and the time uh, during the period of time what will happen with this technology and we can see I circled in red blockchain and we can see that we are entering the era of a uh, draw of uh, disillusionment it means that there was some high expectation there were high expectations from the technology people invested uh, lots of things happened but now we are in a decline and uh, we are soon, or the next stage, will be the slope of alignment and later on the plateau of production. So that's kind of something that gives us confidence that uh, the new project, that we, when we will reach the plateau of production, then the technology is stable and um, hopefully everyone are looking for it. Uh, the question is how much time it will take us to, to reach there. Since blockchain happened very fast, the, the hype and the decrease, so um, according to this chart, we are talking about two years maybe or a bit more. Uh, we can also see, I don't know if you can see it, but in, uh, there are some blockchain technologies such as uh, data security blockchain, which is still before the hype. So there is some chance for different um, projects which are not in, in the main decentralized blockchain technology. So, in contrast for the previous uh, picture, this is what we are hoping for soon. Um, 
I gathered here another uh, chart that shows us. It's very interesting for me, actually, because we see the total number of blockchain wallets, which uh, today, at the, uh, it's only in January uh, 19, updated, it shows almost 35 million. But what is interesting is that we can see that in January 18, there was a, a big a leap, or a almost vertical leap in the number of uh, wallets, but still the adoption is happening. So we would expect, if nothing would happen in, in this space, we would expect that the chart would be much more uh, horizontal. However, it is uh, still uh, climbing, which is good. It shows that there is an adoption. But uh, do you know how many people, adults, are in the world today? Around 8 billion people. And we are talking about 35 million wallets, meaning that there is still huge potential or huge potential for adoption. And, uh, and that's also a reason to uh, be optimistic. Um, ICOs and STOs, let's talk a bit about uh, fundraising, which is interesting for all of us. I'm sure you know what is ICO, but I gathered the um, really uh, the definition of it, and there are a few points I want just to stress. So ICO is an unregulated form of crowdfunding for blockchain projects. And the two points in the bottom are important. The plan or the best fit for ICO is for a non-profit project, which is based on blockchain technology. And it's suitable for blockchain technology companies. Sorry, before it was blockchain economy. So what does it mean? That every project that have uh, or did an ICO um, and was not or did not align with those two points uh, actually was not really a good match for an ICO. We'll see some numbers try to support it. So uh, my colleague, a few presentations before, Pascal also showed some numbers. Uh, here we can see a huge decline, a increase, sorry, in 2017 in fundraising, which uh, almost, let's say, ended in the first quarter of 2018. And since then, numbers of ICOs and uh, money have decreased uh, a lot. Um, although 2018 was still uh, in nominal numbers, quite a lot of uh, money raised there, but it was in the first quarter. We can also see here some, uh, uh, how many published ICOs we had. So again, in the beginning of 2018, uh, more ICOs were published, but still uh, projects are happening. Less money is to support them. It means that each and every project is raising less money than before, and only the, the good and reliable projects are still uh, trying to raise money. So what is the difference? What is the next or, or other opportunities to raise money through uh, blockchain technology? Um, STO, which is a security token offering, which I'm sure everyone heard of, the main characteristics is that it is, the STO value is derived from the company asset. So we take some of the assets, one or a few of the company assets, and we attach a token to it. And by that, we are giving some uh, dividend equities uh, to the investors, which gives a direct link to the company. The advantages compared to traditional fundraising or for IPOs, it's, it opens us secondary market or liquidity opportunities, which is very, uh, very unique and, and great for investors. It reduces cost compared to, to traditional IPOs, and it allows us to do much more efficient marketing worldwide and more uh, broad. Uh, and it's not only for blockchain technology projects. Unlike ICOs, uh, the main, main differences which we try to put in three um, points is that with security token, you are ownership of an asset, while in utility token, in ICO, it's you're only purchasing an access to protocol. Um, investors are expecting profits in STO, while in ICO, they were supposed to purchase those uh, access to the protocol. However, many of them were promised or were 
expecting profits, and this is why also created for us such a, a bubble. Um, it is highly regulated, the security token offering, while the utility token is not supposed to be uh, regulated as long as you keep the utility as a crowd sale and, and you sell access to protocol. Let's see some examples uh, for STOs today in the market. Uh, in real estate project, we have St. Regis Aspen. I don't know if you've heard about this project in the US, raised $18 million for a resort. Uh, Slice, which is a platform for, again, block, uh, real estate project based on uh, uh, blockchain STOs. Funds that have raised money and, and given their investors tokens are uh, blockchain capital, more than 100 million. Spice VC, 40 million dollars. Uh, Non-blockchain companies, regular companies like Lottery.com and uh, Epigen Care, which just uh, offered for secondary market for their investors their tokens. And STOs, STO platforms that allow almost everyone to issue or every company to issue their own tokens and also on later stage uh, trade and uh, do some secondary markets such as Polymac, Securitize and so on. Some numbers of STOs in 2018 and I think each data source can, can be a bit different but we can see uh, an increase in uh, some uh, stability maybe towards the end of this year. Uh, many reasons for it not to grow more, but it also depends, of course, in the prices of, of crypto and many other parameters. Uh, we cannot speak about fundraising blockchain without uh, discussing about regulation. So uh, regulation clearly defined um, security offering, which is good. It gives more comfort to investors, and sometimes that's, or, or most of the time, that will be the entry point for the Let's say bigger money or smarter investors. Um, there are regulated exchanges for secondary market, as I mentioned before, which is uh, great and opens different opportunities. It restores many, much or a lot of the trust to the investors, which some of them were, uh, let's say, not, not very supportive of the ICO uh, buzz, but now they might gain more uh, trust and it creates a higher uh, barrier entry to market, which is also very good and keeps the, the best or the well-funded projects. Um, before finishing some thoughts and considerations, and, and maybe if you have some insights, it would be also great. So um, security tokens will uh, have also the possibility to transfer, transform sorry, from security to utility this is uh, also a very good thing that while thinking of your project, you can make lots of um, uh, interesting and uh, nice business models that are still related to blockchain. Uh, centralization, when we are always talking about decentralized economic, while we are in STOs or discussing about STOs, it is centralized and it is some disadvantage uh, for some people. There's no more uh, anonym anonymity, anonymity, of course, and the uh, real value of uh, tangible use cases um, when you receive or when you get an STO, it is, as we mentioned before, linked to a company and to some uh, profits or dividend, which gives you much more comfort. Um, that's it. Thank you. If you have any questions, if we have time.